Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl, the girl who has everything? Betcha on land, they understand that they don't reprimand their daughters. I want more. Ariel wanted nothing more than to be part of the human world. And thanks to her father, her wish came true. What the hell was that? I'm going to look at orphan girls today in cartoons from the last 25 years, but I'm not going to focus on body image, so just keep an eye open for that. Let's go all the way back to the 1980s. Companies like Mattel and Hasbro were selling crap loads of toys. They started producing cartoons as extended commercials. However, writing and ethical considerations were secondary compared to selling as much as possible. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe was a popular franchise, despite He-Man's ridiculous haircut, I can never get over that. Anyways, in 1985, they decided to come out with a movie in order to expand their character base and sell more toys. The Secret of the Sword was the second movie based off a toy line, and they introduced a new character, an orphan princess. I bet you can't guess who it is. It's She-Ra. You may have defeated us, but you'll never see this child again. <laughs> Adora, the Horde stole you from your parents when you were a tiny baby. So you never knew your mother, and you never knew your father. But you also had a twin brother. <gasps> she is a pretty good female character. She's empowering, she takes action, unlike the previous Disney princesses, for example. However, being a princess orphan is a tired cliche, and it can be damaging. And she doesn't really have her own female identity. She's just a clone of He-Man. She just mimics his male violent behavior. But they didn't call her She-Woman, thank God. And her transformation sequence might be one of my favorites of all time. For the honor of Grayskull! The toy base did expand, and the Masters of the Universe franchise was now more attractive to girls. The third movie based off a toy franchise was the Care Bears movie, which came out just one week after The Secret of the Sword. The movie was released by Nelvana, a Canadian production company which was struggling at the time, and it follows the Care Bears as they help two troubled kids who happen to be orphans. The second movie is set up as a prequel. True Heart Bear and Noble Heart Horse set up the Kingdom of Caring to look after these mutant animal freak orphans who will later be the Care Bears. Wow. The third Care Bears movie follows a normal girl named Alice who gets to pretend to be a princess. I'm just not special. Well, Alice, you look just like the princess. Princess? <gasps> Why, she's beautiful. Like always, I like the bad guy. I'll show this little girl what it means to pretend to be a princess. <laughs> I know what some of you are thinking, and no, I don't think there ever was a lawsuit. After being a princess for a while, Alice decides that she'd rather just be her plain old self, which is a pretty good message. The first movie's a bit patronizing towards orphans, because it's like, okay, we saved you, and everything's sunshine and rainbows. In the second movie, why do the Care Bears have to be orphans? That's just bad writing. And the Care Bear stare is pretty freaky too. Next up is My Little Pony. The main girl, Megan, helps the ponies because she's the keeper of the Rainbow of Life. Ugh. And to the best of my knowledge, she doesn't have any parents. The My Little Pony series truly was a commercial for toys. And with all the girl characters, there's only three boys. Teddy, Ace, and Lancer. Those poor bastards. Some of you guys are probably thinking, well that'd be pretty cool, one guy and all those pony chicks? But no, you would be committing yourself to a rainbow colored hell. My little ponies are incapable of sex. Did you really used to live here, at this orphanage? Sure did, till my parents adopted me. It's not so bad here, but I have to confess, having my own parents would be really nice. You'll get parents someday. Hey, that's the best rainbow I've ever seen! Why does this orphanage seem better than any place I've been to? It seems so fun. I want to be an orphan. And that is not the best rainbow ever. Blue, green, red, yellow. 
You live in a universe of rainbows. If you can't get that order right, you're a rainbow reject. They're looking for their long-lost daughter. A really, truly princess pony could be right here in our very own ice cream shop. It would be so cool to be a princess. Isn't it romantic? A princess must look tailored, as trim as she can be. You don't want those jelly beans. Give them all to me. We found our daughter at last. Oh, Mom. Dad. I just really, truly love happy endings. You probably feel like puking, but they did sell a crap load of toys. Rainbow Bright's yet another orphan who made some people a lot of money and brought color into the world. Whatever. The last toy cartoon I want to talk about is Gem. Basically, it's about a girl named Jerrica whose father created a hologram machine based off his dead wife. Then he died, making Jerrica and her sister orphans. But he left Jerrica a pair of earrings which allows her to turn into Gem. I don't know, it's weird. Jerrica also looks after a foster home for girls, as well as her alias Gem being the lead singer of a group called the Holograms, which says a lot about female identity. And there's also the rival band, the Misfits. I don't really know in this cartoon who's good and who's bad. I just know they all look like whores. With all these toy companies making money, it was only a matter of time before the capitalist rat got his claws into the orphan princess cheese. That's a pretty bad line. After the death of Walt Disney in 1966, the company was somewhat rudderless and produced few successful films until 1989. The Little Mermaid is a huge deal. It marked the beginning of the Disney renaissance in the 90s, it grossed over $200 million worldwide, and the soundtrack went triple platinum. It returned Disney to its musical format after a test run with Oliver and Company, and Ariel was the first in a new wave of princesses, who although they have their faults, are a lot better than the lie back and take it orphan princesses of before. It's also a pretty damn good movie. The music's fun, the animation's pretty good, the characters are funny, and although it takes a lot of liberties with the original story, I think it borrows a lot from Shakespeare's Tempest, which is a cool play. But really, Ariel is a pretty bad role model. She falls in love at first sight, and she sells her soul in order to be with a man she hasn't even talked to. She's also a mute for a lot of the movie, which says, I don't know, the perfect woman shouldn't talk back. Lastly, she's daddy's spoiled little princess. Where is her mom, and why is he so old? She's 16 or 17 in this movie. This movie showed little girls that their job was to sing, marry the first boy they fell in love with, and bug daddy to get you stuff you can't normally get. It's really messed up. And that's definitely a phallus. Beauty and the Beast was the next princess. Again, she has no mother. And this movie was really good. It lost Best Picture to Silence of the Lambs. Belle's a bit more mature than Ariel. She's a book reader, and she doesn't marry the first guy who shows interest in her. Although I do really like Gaston. I use antlers in all of my decorating. Belle's problem is that she falls for the old Byronic hero. He locks her in a dungeon and he treats her like crap. You will join me for dinner. That's not a request! So I think a lot of girls started believing that if you love someone enough, you can change them into a good person. And that's a really bad basis for a relationship. A mature role model would get the hell away from Beast when she had the opportunity. And again I ask, where is her mother? The last major Disney princess is Jasmine from Aladdin, another pretty good movie. I think Jasmine's kind of cool. Again, she's got no mom and she is daddy's little princess, but she uses her role in order to control the situation. According to law, she must marry before her next birthday, but she rejects suitor after suitor. She doesn't seem to care. She has her father wrapped around her finger, and watch how she seduces Jafar. I never realized how incredibly handsome you are. You pussycat. Tell me more about myself. Jasmine teaches young girls that they can manipulate a patriarchal system by seducing powerful men, which at worst is a better message than Ariel or Belle. When you look back at the last 25 years and consider all the orphan princesses, all the daddy's little princesses, and all the girls who just don't have moms, you begin to realize that there aren't many healthy role models for these young girls. I think at least that this has had a negative impact on society. Look at girls who had their careers begin in Disney. Christina Aguilera, Princess, Slut. Britney Spears, Princess, Slut. Lindsay Lohan, Princess, Slut. It's crazy, and these princesses are an insult to mothers and real orphans. That being said, Fiona was cool, and I'm looking forward to the Frog Princess, who is black and has two parents. 
That's enough crap for me for today.